Hello there, it's Mrs. Scoville, and today we are going to be looking at pedigrees and analyzing them. We have two objectives for today's lesson. The first is to interpret a pedigree to determine the mode of inheritance, and really that's just left over from last time. And then our new one is to identify the genotypes of individuals in a pedigree based on that mode of inheritance. So as a reminder, the modes of inheritance that we saw in pedigrees um, were autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, and then we had two sex-linked um, modes of inheritance that we looked at, X-linked dominant and X-linked recessive. There are other modes of inheritance, such as codominant and incomplete dominance, but you are not expected to um, look at a pedigree and identify these. What we're going to do now is focus on that second part, and we're gonna go through the same pedigrees that we saw in the previous lesson, and I'm gonna take you through the process of how we actually do the genotypes. So as a reminder, this autosomal dominant inheritance um, pedigree, we can tell that it is such because all of the affected individuals here have an affected parent. Um, we see the trait in every generation, both males and females are affected, and about half of the offspring are affected. So once we know that it's autosomal dominant, then we can go through and actually identify the genotypes. So because it's autosomal dominant, um, I'm just going to use A as we go through this lesson as our allele. Um, we know that any individual that has the trait, so those that are affected, are going to have a capital A. And that's just because it's dominant. Okay? So if they have a capital A, they have the dominant trait. And that's just what we've learned before. So these are all going to be capital A something. If this is just simple autosomal dominance, we know that. We also know that all the individuals that don't have the trait, because this is autosomal dominant, um, in order to have the trait, you just have to have one copy. So any that don't have the trait must be little a, little a, um, aka recessive. Again, we know this because if the dominant is present, it's expressed. So since these are not affected, they all must be recessive. So I already have most of my pedigree completed here. Now we have to use a little bit of logic and infer, based on the children, whether or not some of these parents have um, either a little a for their second little or big A, or if we can even tell. So if I start out here with my, really it's grandparents, so in our first generation, really we should label this. Looking at the grandparents, um, these three children don't tell me anything about the second allele, but this last one, because it's little a, little a, and you get one allele from each parent, I can tell that both of these parents are big A, little a, or heterozygous. Um, and again, that's just because they have to, the only way that this son could be little a, little a is to get one from each parent. All of these, this one I can't tell, so we'll just leave it as a question mark. We don't know the second allele. But here in this last one, again, I can tell from looking at the offspring, I know they got little a from dad. Mom must also have a little a in order to have a child that is recessive. Over here, I can also tell um, I've got a dominant one, but because dad is little a, little a, that's the only thing he has to give. So at this point, my pedigree would be complete. These are all of the genotypes that I can tell. Because these two don't have any children, I cannot tell anything beyond what um, I've already filled in, so we'll leave those as big A question mark. And oh, there's one, two, three. Okay, so now moving on to autosomal recessive. So as a reminder, we know that this is autosomal recessive because it's in less than half the individuals in the pedigree. It's skipping generations, so we don't see it in every single generation. So we've got our one, two, three generations, and generation one does not have any, okay, any individuals with the trait. Um, males and females are both affected. And then, um, just a reminder, inbreeding will increase these. So with these, if they have the trait, Okay, so if they have the trait, that means that they have the recessive trait. So those individuals that have it, I know will be little a, little a. Okay, this is still just normal, dominant, and recessive. So if they're little a, little a, they're recessive. But again, in this pedigree, those that are um, highlighted or affected are the ones with the receptive trait. So I know all of these are little a, little a. The rest of them must have a dominant, so they're all going to be big A something. And then we'll go back and see if we can figure out the something. And again, I just know that all of the ones that are white, they're not affected with the recessive trait. Therefore, they must have the dominant. All right, so now if I look at um, really right here, that's kind of an easy one to figure out. I have a parent that is affected with the recessive trait. You have to get one from each parent 
So both of these children, this daughter and the son, must have a little a because dad only has little a to give. Mom, we also can tell um, because we have a child that is recessive. Again, dad only has little a to give. Mom must also have a little a. Um, that's the only way we could get a child that is recessive. Same logic, looking back here at the grandparents, we've got two sons that both have little a, one from each parent. Both of these must be heterozygous. On these, these autosomal recessive ones, um, anybody that's big A, little a, only on the recessive ones, remember they're a carrier. So the other thing that we need to do as we go through is if we have any that are a carrier, we can half shade them in. And this will indicate that, hey, we know that they've got that second allele, but it's gonna be hidden, and we only do that for the recessives. These two, we can't tell. So we'll leave this as a question mark because we have no offspring in the parents while they're heterozygous so we could get any combination. And then here, same problem. The kids, um, we know that they're each little a, and that's based off of dad, but I can't tell with mom if she's little a um, or big a. So at this point, this one's done as well. We filled in all of the genotypes that we can infer. And one, two, three again. Okay, <clears throat> now it's gonna get slightly more complicated. So we have X-linked dominant and X-linked recessive. Um, that we need to do. So this one is an X-linked dominant pedigree. And here, remember X-linked dominant, the main pattern that we look for is the father passing on to his daughters, but not the sons, as we can clearly see over here on the right. So looking at our generations here, one, two, three. Again, we can go through and do the genotypes. But the reason this one's gonna be slightly more complex is now we have to identify male and female. So the girls that are circled, we know that their genotype is going to be XX because they're female. And because this is dominant, and again, I'll just use A as the allele here, they are have to, they're gonna to have to have at least one big A. We may not know what the second one is. Okay, we'll have to see. And here, if they're not circled in, because this is again a dominant trait, I know that they're X little a, X little a, because that would be the recessive version. The males, Again, because this is X-linked, this is a dominant trait, so they're gonna be XA, and then Y, because males are XY, and there's nothing on the Y. Again, it's X-linked, that just means that it's on the X chromosome. The males that are recessive, will have the little one, and that's all. So right away, there are quite a few of these I could just go ahead and fill in. Um, the males are kinda of the easiest to start with, so we'll do those. So all of the ones that are unaffected, I know they have the recessive, so we'll do the males here. And again, you, as you're doing these, you have to ask yourself um, that mode of inheritance first because you're gonna see um, as we go through, what you actually write depends on the mode of inheritance. So all of these, x little a, y. Same thing with the other version, I know on the males, they're x capital A, y. All right, so the males are all done at this point. Now I have to go back and do the females. Now the females that are recessive, I for sure know what they are, so I'll do them next. Oops, I tried to make that female a male. Whoops, all right, so we'll make that one correct now. Okay, so she's a girl, not a boy. Now it gets a slightly complicated. So all of these, I know that they have at least one, and then they're X something and then we're gonna have to do some inference. And here, the only reason that these look more complicated is because you're having to do the X and Y, but once you write those in, this is exactly the same as any of the dominant or recessive. You use the same logic, do the backtracking when you can, and when you can't, you just put a question mark. So, an easy one to start with is right here. I know that mama is X little a, X little a. So the, both of these daughters must be X big A, X little a. They just have to be because that's the only thing that mom has to give. So that was an easy one. Same thing over here. Mama's only got X little a. So both of these daughters, maybe X a big A, X little a. And then on this one, 
the daughter has it, mom had it, dad has only little A to give, so therefore that's going to be what he's going to give. So this one we know also is big A, little A. And then, let's see, on mom, same problem on mom. Her, her dad said this one's grandfather had the same thing, but this one up here we can't tell. There are no parents to look at for that one. Um, although, wait, no, we do know. Because if we look at the daughter right here, she's a little A. So in this case, we could figure out every single one. So again, just go through and do the ones that you know first, and then um, you have to backtrack on any that are unclear. All right, and then our final one here, X-linked recessive. Um, same process, you have to do X and Ys. We know that this one is X-linked recessive because it's basically only males that we're seeing, and you don't see that pattern of fathers passing um, to daughters, and here, effective fathers are not gonna give it to their sons at all. So overall, the trait is rare in this pedigree, and we do see skipping of generations. Um, in this one, we are gonna have carriers again. So this time, um, if we had any females that were filled in, we don't, they would be X little a, X little a, because this is a recessive trait. So remember, when it was recessive, you just put AA. We're doing the same thing, but we're just sticking it on the X. And females that are unaffected, we know that they're X big A, because they're dominant, but we won't know what the second one is. We'll have to infer that. Males, they're only gonna have two options. They're either gonna have it, and again, this is recessive, so it'll be X little a, Y. Or if they don't have it, they've gotta have the dominant trait, X big A, Y. Males only have two options, because they only have one copy of the X. So we'll go through and do the males first. Um, on these X-linked ones, it's easier to do the males first. We only have two options, so it's pretty straightforward. And look at that, my pedigree is already like half done. Okay, so now the females, now we're gonna have to do some inference. So in all the females, I know they're X big A, X something. And then I'll have to go through and figure out logically what that second one is, or if I can even tell. Make that big A look a little better. X big A, X something. So again, you just go in and fill in everything that you can already tell it should be a big A, X something. Okay, and then we'll go through and see what we can figure out. So here, because I have a son, that one's pretty easy to tell. Because I have a son that has a little A, dad only has big A to give. That didn't come from dad. This child got the Y from dad. So mom must have a little A on the second one. She just has to. Here, we know where that little A came from. It came from dad because dad had the trait. Um, the same thing is going to be true for this daughter over here. Dad only has little a, so she's got to be x, big A, x, little a. Over here, dad only has big A to give, so that could be that one, but mom has big A or little a, so this one we can't tell. So we'll just put a question mark there. Looking at these, we know that dad is okay. Um, he got that probably, let's see, he got that from mom. That one's okay. Here, we don't have any affected, so these we can't tell. Yeah, there are no affected offspring, so we can't tell. And then we've just got one more. Um, this one, we know that she got big A from dad, but we have two options there, so again, we don't know on that one. At this point, what we need to do, the only thing that's left on this one is because this is recessive, we do need to go back and shade in any carriers. So if we look, any of them that are X, oops, or any of them that are X, big A, X, little A are going to be carriers. So again, if they're X, big A, X, little a, it's only going to be the females, but they'll be carriers as well. So we need to fill them in. Um, so I've got a few of them right here. X, big A, X, little a, she's a carrier. Um, got one over here, she's a carrier. Um, we don't know on that one. And up here, we didn't know on her, so we can't tell. I realize we didn't fill that one in. Um, so those are the only ones that we can fill in with certainty. Uh, there might be other carriers there, but we can't tell from the um, pedigree. So with that, um, we actually are at the end of our lesson. So it is now time to write your summary and complete. Make sure that you're completing your summary using the summary frame and complete the practice questions as well.